hi guys welcome to Puran study as we have said we are here for you so today we have a very interesting topic from history which helped created a shining and prosperous new country in South Asia not so long ago the Bangladesh Liberation War Mukti Juddho also known as Bangladesh War of Independence this video is the first episode of our historical war series and this year is being celebrated by Bangladesh as Mujib year or Mujib Borsho to celebrate 100th birth anniversary of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman. So let's not waste any more time and get started. We are going to break down this video in four parts. Part 1, Background. Part 2, The War. Part 3, India's involvement in the war. And Part 4, Surrender, Aftermath and World's Reaction. At first, The Background. Prior to the partition of British India, the Lahore Resolution initially planned separate Muslim majority states in the eastern and northwestern zones of British India. There was also a proposal for an independent United Bengal raised by then Prime Minister of Bengal Hussein Shahid Suhawardi in 1946, but it never gathered any strong momentum. Political negotiations led in August 1947 to the official birth of two states, Pakistan and India, giving presumably permanent homes for Muslims and Hindus respectively following the departure of the British. The dominion of Pakistan comprised two geographically and culturally separate areas to the east and the west with the nearly equal population and India in between. The western zone was popularly termed West Pakistan and the eastern zone was initially termed East Bengal and later East Pakistan and eventually independent Bangladesh. Now look at this map carefully. How a country can be governed where there is no land connection between two parts of the country with India in between, which Pakistan considers as its enemy, means they were totally different from each other, from culture to food to language except the religion. And this language becomes the foremost reason of independent Bangladesh. In 1948, Governor General Muhammad Ali Jinnah declared that Urdu and only Urdu would be the federal language of Pakistan and removed Bengali script from currency and stamps which were in place since the British Raj and also insisted that by Bengalis of Bangladesh should take up Urdu as their mother language as elite of West Pakistan thought Bengali as language has influence from Hinduism and Hindu but these decisions backfired as millions of Bengalis took to the streets and started protesting against these decisions as they thought these measures were taken to suppress the culture of the Eastern Wing. The movement reached its peak in 1952 when on 21st February the police fired on protesting students and civilians causing several deaths and became the major turning point in the history of the world as it was the first case when people was martyred for their language. And UNESCO declared 21st February as International Mother Language Day in November 1999. Now comes the second most important point, disparity. Take a look at this chart. Although East Pakistan had a larger population, West Pakistan dominated the divided country politically and received more money from the common budget. Nearly 40% of amount was spent on as of West from 1950 to 1970. Bengalis were underrepresented in the Pakistan military. Officers of Bengalis origin in the different wings of the armed forces made up just 5% of overall force by 1965. Of these, only a few were command position with the majority in technical or ad administrative posts. When Pakistan is believed that Bengalis were not martially inclined, unlike Pashtuns and Punjabis, the martial racist notion was dismissed as ridiculous and humiliating by Bengalis. Ideological and cultural differences. In 1947, the Bengali Muslims had identified themselves with Pakistan's Islamic project. By the 1970s, the people of East Pakistan had given priority to their Bengali ethnicity over their religious identity, desiring a society in accordance with Western principles such as secularism, democracy and socialism. 
There was also a cyclone named Bola which hit the East Pakistani coastline on 12 November 1970 killing an estimated 3 lakh to 5 lakh people the deadliest tropical cyclone on record in the world and there was no proper relief sent by government which enraged Bengalis even more a week after the landfall president Yahya Khan considered that his government had made slips and mistakes in its handling of the relief efforts due to a lack of understanding of the magnitude of the disaster now comes political differences although east pakistan has slight majority of the country's population political power remained in the hands of west pakistanis bengalis observed that west pakistani establishment would swiftly remove any east pakistani elected prime minister of pakistan such as khwaja nazimuddin mohammad ali bogra or hussein shahid suhaiti and their frustration grew with the military dictatorship of ayub khan and yahya khan both west pakistanis and it reached its peak when the bangladesh awami league the largest east pakistani political party led by sheikh mujibur rahman won a landslide victory in the national elections the party won 167 of the 169 seats allotted to east pakistan and thus a majority of the 313 seats in the national alliance assembly this gave the army league the constitutional right to form a government however julfikar ali bhutto a former foreign minister the leader of the pakistan people's party refused to allow rahman to become the prime minister of whole pakistan and on march 3 the two leader with the president general yahya khan met in dhaka to decide the fate of the country but it was unsuccessful and sheikh mujibur rahman called for a nationwide strike On 7th March 1971 Sheikh Mujibur Rahman delivered a speech at the race course ground in this speech he mentioned a further four point condition to consider at the national assembly meeting on 25 March he closed his speech saying our struggle is for our freedom our struggle is for our independence this speech is considered by many the main event that inspired the nation to fight for its independence UNESCO also recognized Bangabandhu historic speech General Tikka Khan was sent to Dhaka to become governor of East Bengal. East Pakistani judges, including Justice Siddiqui, refused to swear him in. Between 10 and 13 March, PIA, Pakistan International Airlines, cancelled all their international routes to urgently fly government passengers to Dhaka. These government passengers were all Pakistani army in civilian dress. A ship was also harbored in Chittagong port carrying ammunition and soldiers. But the Bengali workers and sailors at the port refused to unload the ship. A unit of East Pakistani rifles refused to obey commands to fire on the Bengali demonstrators, beginning a mutiny among the Bengali soldiers. And this was an indication that West Pakistanis had something very evil planned in their mind. All those planning led to Operation Searchlight started on 25th March 1971 by arresting Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman to curb the Bengali independence movement and by taking control of the major cities on 26th March and then eliminating all opposition political or military within one month. Other Awami League leaders were arrested as well. While a few fled Dhaka to avoid arrest, the Awami League was banned by General E.I. The main phase of Operation Searchlight ended with the fall of the last major town in Bengali hands in mid-May. The operation also began the 1971 Bangladesh genocide which included rape and murder. This systematic killing served only to enrich the Bengalis as per Bangladeshi media. 2 lakh to 30 lakh Bengalis were killed during the process. British Medical Journal have put forward the figure ranging from between 1 lakh 25,000 to 5 lakh 50,000. American political scientist Rudolf Rummel puts total deaths at 1.5 million. According to Asia Times, at a meeting of the military top brass, Yahya Khan declared, kill 3 million of them and the rest will eat out of our hands. Before his arrest, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman signed an official declaration that read,
Today, Bangladesh is a sovereign and independent country. On Thursday night, West Pakistani armed forces suddenly attacked the police barracks at Razarbagh and EPR headquarters at Pilkhana in Dhaka. Many innocent and unarmed have been killed in Dhaka city and other places of Bangladesh. Violent clashes between EPR and police on the one hand and the armed forces of Pakistani on the other are going on. The Bengalis are fighting the enemy with great courage for an independent Bangladesh. May Allah did us in our faith fight for freedom joy bangla but before broadcasting of the message he was arrested and a telegram containing the message reached some student but they didn't have means and permission to broadcast them and then the message was declared and broadcasted by mr ziau rahman on behalf of sheikh muzibur rahman from swadin bangla bitar kendra radio established by some rebel bengali radio workers in kalurghat which read this is swadin bangla bitar kendra I, Major Jiao Rahman, at the direction of Bangabandhu Mujibur Rahman, hereby declare the Independent People's Republic of Bangladesh has been established. Victory is by the grace of Allah, ours. Joy Bangla. Transmission capability of the station was limited, but the message was picked up by a Japanese ship in the Bay of Gulf. It was then retransmitted by Radio Australia and later by the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC. But M.A. Hannan, an army league leader from Chittagong, is said to have made the first announcement of the declaration of independence over the radio on 26 March 1971. 26 March 1971 is considered the official independence day of Bangladesh and the name Bangladesh was in effect henceforth. Then there comes the Mukti Bahini, the guerrilla resistance movement consisting of the Bangladeshi military, paramilitary and civilians. It was an underground Bangladesh army who were the main resistance against Pakistani armies atrocities. There were nearly 1,50,000 members. They were created, armed and provided logistics support by India's intelligence agency, research and analysis wing, RAW. On 17 April 1971, a provisional government was formed in Meherpur district in West Bangladesh, bordering India with Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who was in prison in Pakistan as President, Shahid Nazrul Islam as Acting President, Tajuddin Ahmed as Prime Minister and General Muhammad Ataul Ghani Osmani as Commander-in-Chief Bangladesh Forces. Bangladesh forces were set up on 11 July. Bangladesh was divided into 11 sectors in July, each with a commander chosen from defected officers of the Pakistani army who joined the Mukti Bahini to conduct guerrilla operations and train fighters. Most of their training camps were situated near the border area and were operated with assistance from India. During June-July, Mukti Bahini started monsoon offensive by attacking Pakistani border outposts with Indian aid, but the results were mixed and failed to achieve its objective. The major success story was Operation Jackpot, in which naval commandos mined and blew up burst ships in Chittagong, Mongla, Narayan Ganj, and Chandpur on 15 August 1971. In October December, 90 out of 370 BOPs or border outposts fell to Bengali forces. Guerrilla attacks intensified as did Pakistani and Rajakar reprisals on civilian populations. Pakistani forces were reinforced by 8 battalions from West Pakistan. The Bangladeshi independence fighters were managed to temporarily capture airships at Lalmoni Hat and Shalu Tikar. Both of these were used for flying in supplies and arms for India. Pakistan sent another five battalions from West Pakistan as reinforcements. Now comes the third part. Indian involvement and starting of 1971 Battle of India-Pakistan and the third war between the two countries within the span of 24 years of their freedom. As fighting grew between the occupation army and the Bengali Mukti Bahini, an estimated 
10 million Bengalis sought refuge in the Indian states of Assam and West Bengal. Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had concluded that instead of taking in millions of refugees, India would be economically better off going to war against Pakistan. By the end of April 1971, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had asked the Indian Army Chief General Sam Maneksho if he was ready to go to war with Pakistan. He then said he could guarantee victory if she would allow him to prepare for the conflict on his terms and set a date for it. Bangla Gandhi accepted his condition. By November 1971, an Indian-Pakistani war seemed inevitable. In November 1971, thousands of people led by conservative Pakistani politicians marched in Lahore and across Pakistan calling for Pakistan to crush India. On the evening of 3 December at about 5.40 p.m., the Pakistani Air Force launched surprise preemptive strikes on 11 airfields in northwestern India, including Agra, which was 480 km from the border. At the time of this attack, the Taj Mahal had been camouflaged with a forest of twigs and leaves and draped with barrel wrap because it was marble glowed like a white beacon in the moonlight. In an address to the nation on radio that same evening, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi hailed that the air strike were a declaration of war against India and the Indian Air Force IAF responded with initial air strikes that very night. This air action marked the official start of the Indo-Pakistan War of 1971. The main Indian objective on the eastern front was to capture Dhaka and the on the western front was to prevent Pakistan from entering Indian soil. But neither government had formally issued a declaration of war. Three Indian cops were involved in the liberation of East Pakistan. They were supported by nearly three brigades of Mukti Bahini fighting alongside them and many more who were fighting irregularly. That was far superior to the Pakistan army of three divisions. The Indian quickly overran the country selectively engaging or bypassing heavily defended strongholds. Pakistani forces were unable to effectively counter the Indian attack as they had been deployed in small units around the border to counter the guerrilla attacks by the Mukti Bahini. The Indian Air Force carried out several sorties against Pakistan and within a week IAF aircraft dominated the skies of East Pakistan. It achieved near total air supremacy by the end of the first week as the entire Pakistan air contingent in the East PAF No. 14 squadron was grounded because of India and Bangladesh airstrikes at Tejgaon, Kurmitola, Lalmunirhat and Shamshennagar. Unlike the 1965 war, the Navy NHQ staffers and commanders of Pakistan Navy knew very well that the Navy was ill-prepared for the naval conflict with India. The Pakistan Navy was in no condition of fighting an offensive war in deep sea against the Indian Navy and neither was it in a condition to mount serious defense against Indian Navy seaborne encroachment. Seahawks from the carrier INS Vikrant also struck. Chittagong, Barishal and Cox Bazaar destroying the eastern wing of Pakistan Navy and effectively blockading the East Pakistan port, thereby cutting off any escape routes for the stranded Pakistani soldiers. The newly formed Bangladesh Navy aided the Indians in the main marine warfare carrying out attacks, most notably Operation Jackpot. There was another event going on the backdrop of this war. The U.S. government stood by its old ally, Pakistan, in terms of diplomacy and military threats. U.S. President Richard Nixon and his National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger feared Soviet expansion into South and Southeast Asia. Nixon feared that an Indian invasion of West Pakistan would mean total Soviet domination of the region and that it would seriously undermine the global position of the United States and the regional position of America's new tacit ally, China. And in direct violation of the U.S. Congress imposed sanctions on Pakistan, Nixon sent military supplies to Pakistan and routed them through Jordan and Iran, while also encouraging China to increase its arms supplies to Pakistan. The Nixon administration also ignored reports it received of the genocidal activities of the Pakistani army in East Pakistan. Nixon denied getting involved in the situation, saying that it was an internal matter of Pakistan. But when Pakistan defeat seemed certain, Nixon sent the aircraft carrier USS Enterprise to the Bay of Bengal, a move deemed by the Indians as a nuclear threat. 
Enterprise arrived on station on 11 December 1971. On 6 and 13 December, the Soviet Navy dispatched two groups of ships armed with nuclear missiles. They tailed U.S. Task Force 74 in the Indian Ocean from 18 December until 7 January 1972. And that's how this has been thwarted by Soviet Union. And the last part of the video, Surrender and Aftermath and World's Reaction. Unable to defend Dhaka, the Pakistani surrendered on 16 December 1971. On 16 December 1971, Lieutenant General Amir Abdullah Khan Niazi, commander of Pakistan Armed Forces located in East Pakistan, signed the instrument of surrender. Over 93,000 Pakistani troops surrendered to the Indian forces and Bangladesh Liberation Forces, making it the largest surrender since World War II. A smooth transition in 1972 the Shimla agreement was signed between India and Pakistan the treaty ensured that Pakistan recognized the independence of Bangladesh in exchange of the return of the Pakistani PWOs or prisoner of, of wars India released more than 93,000 Pakistani prisoner of wars in it is perhaps fitting that the Mukti Bahaini was at the forefront when the Pakistani high command in the east threw in the power is now the free capital of a free country. The instrument of surrender was signed in Dhaka at 16.31 hours Indian Standard Time by Lieutenant General A. Nazi on behalf of the Pakistan Eastern Command. Lieutenant General Jagjit Singh Arora, GOC in command of the Indian and Bangladesh forces in the Eastern Theatre accepted the surrender. So, what was the reaction in West Pakistan to the war? Reaction to the defeat and dismemberment of half the nation and a mixed surrender of the army in East Pakistan was a shocking loss to top military and civilian alike and was very embarrassing. Yahya Khan's dictatorship collapsed and gave way to Bhutto, who took the opportunity to rise to the power. General Niazi, who surrendered along with 93,000 troops, was viewed with suspicion and contempt upon his return to Pakistan. He was shunned and branded a traitor. There was another event on 12 December. With Pakistan facing imminent defeat, the United States requested that the Security Council has reconvent. Pakistan's Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was rushed to New York City to make the case for a resolution on the ceasefire. The Council continued deliberations for four days. By the time proposals were finalized, Pakistan's forces in the East had surrendered and the war had ended, making the measures merely academic. Bhutto, frustrated by the failure of the resolution and the inaction of the United Nations, ripped up his speech and left the Council. I will not be a party to the ignominious surrender of part of my country. You can take your security council. Here you are. I am going. Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi provided extensive diplomatic and political support to the Bangladesh movement. She told many countries in a bid to create awareness of the Pakistani atrocities against Bangladeshis. This effort was to prove vital later during the war in framing the world's context of the war and to justify military action by India. Also, following Pakistan's defeat, it ensured prompt recognition of the newly independent state of Bangladesh. Bangladesh sought admission in the UN with most voting in its favor, but China vetoed this as Pakistan was its key ally. The United States, also a key ally of Pakistan, was one of the last nations to accord Bangladesh recognition. Most UN member nations were quick to recognize Bangladesh within months of its independence. The Himalayan Kingdom of Bhutan became the first state in the world to recognize the newly independent country on 6 December 1971. So. That's it for today. I hope this video will help you. If you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to us for more video like this. And please don't forget to comment on our new series, Historical Wars, and what would you like to want on this new series. Thank you.